And then as soon as the entrance chant is over, like as soon as the over
Amen.
Good evening and welcome to our parish celebration of the Holy Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper. A special welcome to anyone visiting our community today. As we come to the table of the Lord, we recall the meal celebrated by Jesus and his disciples the night before he died. In today's readings, we not only witness the rituals of Passover and the Lord's Supper, but we also pursue the deeper meaning of these actions. The Eucharist is the center point of Christian life and the source of our unity. We come together to be nourished by this gift and challenged by its meaning. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn, number 424 in the Catholic Book of Worship, I Come With Joy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we have completed our Lenten observance and now have begun the solemn celebration of the Easter feast. On these great days, it is our duty to glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have salvation, life, and resurrection. The oils we received tonight were blessed and consecrated at the Mass of Chrism by Bishop Crosby for use throughout the year. With them, the sick will be anointed, those awaiting the waters of rebirth will be strengthened, and those who are baptized and confirmed will share the mission of Christ, the Anointed One. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, who wills these holy oils with life and grace, the saving work of Jesus Christ is continued in the Church. Behold the oil of the sick. Thanks be to God. Louise Misaki brings forward the oil of the sick. This oil is used for sacramental anointings, through which God brings strength and consolation to his people. All those who have celebrated the anointing of the sick are signs of trust in God's providence.
Sunoco, Morocco brings forward the oil of catechumens. Sunoco has journeyed with our parish RCIA program and will be strengthened by the oil of catechumens in preparation for baptism during the Paschal Feast. sacred chrism. Thanks be to God. Henry Cantor brings forward the oil of sacred chrism. Henry was anointed with this oil at one of our parish celebrations of confirmation. He is a sign of God's sanctification of those he has called into friendship with him.
Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a new sacrifice for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who will eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded and your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt, this day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in the sight of the Lord is 
the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. The God of blessing that we blessed is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The cup of blessing that we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, 
Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has been has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, put on his robe, and returned to the table, Jesus said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, the Holy Thursday Mass, more than anything other, is a, a mass of signs and symbols. All of our rituals are uh, rituals that include uh, rich signs and symbols, but perhaps the Mass of the Lord's Supper uh, is, uh, is the most rich in that sense. Uh, of all the celebrations of the liturgical year, uh, this is the Mass uh, that has the most detail. We have uh, the oils we receive uh, from the Mass of Chrism. We have the mandatum, the washing of feet, uh, in which we, uh, in a beautiful and liturgical way, uh, remind ourselves uh, of a beautiful moment in the Lord's ministry. Uh, we have the celebration of the Eucharist, whose institution that we celebrate this day. This is a Mass of signs and symbols. And what we do this night, it puts us in contact with about 3,500 years or so of salvation history. Uh, so nothing we do tonight is new. Uh, with this Mass, uh, we obey the command that Jesus gave at the Last Supper, as we recalled in the second reading today. Do this in remembrance of me. We make that commandment real this night. And at the Last Supper 2,000 years ago, Jesus was the one who gave a new meaning to a ceremonial meal that had been celebrated at that time ever since the time of Moses. For about 1,500 years or so, it had been celebrated already, the Passover. Now, the Passover celebration it was a holy day that God himself had established, as the first reading for us this, re this evening recalls. God had commanded the ancient Israelites to celebrate this meal so that they would never forget, that they would never forget everything that he had done for them, freeing them from slavery, leading them to the promised land. The Passover then was a remembrance of that, but it wasn't just any kind of remembrance. It was a sacred remembrance. And so it also renewed the chosen people's special relationship with God. In that Passover meal, they didn't just remember what had happened, they made it real yet again. That special relationship of friendship between them and God. You know, in a similar way, Jesus commanded his church to continue ordaining priests and to celebrate the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a remembrance of his work of redemption by which he saved us from sin, opened for us the way to enter the eternal life, not simply the promised land, the promised land for all. And as a sacred remembrance, it also makes present Christ's everlasting sacrifice. What we do here tonight is not simply remind ourselves of what the Lord did, we make present that sacrifice that he offered for us. And so our liturgy is not then just a photograph of a past event. In a sense, it draws aside the curtain of time and space so that that past event is actually made present right here in our midst. That's what we've gathered here for this evening, for that, present, for that event that we celebrate to be made present in our midst. 
Why is it then that God is so intent on reminding us of all that he has done for us? Why do we do this again and again and again each year? Why do we make present these mysteries again and again and again, centuries later? I think first and foremost, because life gets tough and we get distracted. You know, we need to be reminded of God's immense love for us because the challenges of life tend to give us a bit of tunnel vision. You know, we have many joys and delights, but those joys and delights, they don't eliminate our crosses. Life is tough. We live in a fallen world, a world that's full of injustice, full of hardship, full of losses of all kinds, and it hurts sometimes. Sometimes it hurts a lot. We ourselves are fallen beings. We lose our tempers. We give in to temptation. We get involved in things that we shouldn't get involved in. And when we do these things, we add to our own misery. And not just to our own misery, but the misery of those around us. And in the midst of all of this mess, in the midst of all of this fallenness, it's hard to remember the bigger picture, that God never gives up on us. That redemption is always on offer. That God is raising us up out of the stuff of our lives. And so God gives us periodic reminders, like this liturgy this evening, to remind us that he is in the process of working a great miracle in our midst. You know, there's another reason we need regular and constant reminders of God's goodness. It's because we're not very good listeners. All of this meditation upon scripture, and we bathe ourselves in the word of God, or at least we tell ourselves we do, but we're not the best listeners. God puts his goodness and wisdom in front of us all the time in this life. The beauties of nature, the beauty of music and art, the joy of friendship, the joy of being cared for by other people, the delight of a job well done, that sense of accomplishment, all of this is God's goodness. Everything around us that is good is, in a little way, a mirror of God's generous love. If we like something in this life, if something pleases us in this world, it's because in some way it mirrors for us the goodness of God. We're surrounded by these reminders, but they can so easily be eclipsed by even one moment of difficulty. We're not the best listeners. And so God puts these things before us again and again and again. Just think about how easily we become distracted when we try to pray. Just think about what happens to our prayers when even one thing goes wrong in our lives. We need these reminders because we're not the best at hearing that, 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 that beautiful word of love that God speaks to us. And so we tell ourselves, or we bathe ourselves in that, in that expression of love again and again, year after year, so that hopefully at one point it will sink in. You now, hearing God's word in our hearts, it gives us such comfort and courage, but it also usually invites us to change in some way, to live our lives in a way that is somehow more Christ centered or more Christ like than it is at the present moment. And that's not always easy. Even when we want to listen to God, the noise with which we surround ourselves in this life, it makes it hard to do so. And so today, and for the next three days, we pause. We take a moment away from all of that noise as best we can. We take a step back as best we can from the stuff of everyday life, and we focus on God. You know, God has to fight through all of that noise to make his voice heard. But he makes his voice heard. The more reminders he gives us, the better chance he has of getting our attention. And so the liturgy tonight is one of the most beautiful and most attention-getting reminders of the year. But God will speak to us, even if we're too distracted. Even if we're too distracted this night, or this week, or this month. God will continue to speak to us. And that's why we glory in this day. Because of the truth that it speaks. It speaks to us the truth of where we find our God waiting for us in this place, waiting for us in our lives. God is glad that we have gathered here for this celebration. God is glad that we have come together to do this in remembrance of him so that he could issue the reminder that he knows we need. God knows we need to be reminded of how much he cares about us, of the fact that he has not given up on us, the fact that he'll never give up on us. God knows of our need in this respect, and he has responded to that need in abundance. And so then let us live this celebration full of gratitude, 
full of attention, letting God speak to us, listening for whatever word he wants to give us over the next couple of days. You know, we celebrate the holiest time of the year. How could we not believe that God will speak some truth to us? All we have to do is listen. Friends, God is never outdone in generosity. If we give him our attention in a special way during these holy days, then he'll certainly give us the reminders we need, the reminder of his love, the reminder of his presence in our midst. May God bless you. And I invite forward those who have uh, been selected to, uh, to, to participate in the mandato. Please join us singing number 67 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Ubi Caritas. What's that? They're down there. Go over there.
you go, all right? and of love you gather your people for the meal where where you have prepared, where you have prayed that all may be one give us grace to serve one another as you have set us an example to treasure the memorial of your son and to put all our trust in your mercy and compassion grant this through Christ our lord amen the preparation hymn is number 595 in the catholic book of worship Christians, let us love one another.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, And with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and Wayne, his assistant Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus and Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysanagus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. 
Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the 
Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share with one another the sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Sight, the death 
and life of those you love. We are your servants, for you have set us free. No, you're going to go around with us. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends, one announcement. The Mass of the Lord's Supper continues with the Eucharistic procession and adoration all are kindly asked to depart in reverential silence, aware of the fact that many remain at prayer here in the worship space. We will conclude with night prayer and the reposition of the Blessed Sacrament at 10.45 p.m. hymn is number 68b in the Catholic Book of Worship, Hail Our Savior's Glorious Body.
Amigo.